the quietest study is actually a big registration study for Zanubrutinib. And this report that we presented at ASH is going to be talking about a subset of patients enrolled on that study. And these are patients who have got 17 P deletion CLL. Now, these patients are normally not suitable candidates for chemotherapy because we know that these patients are resistant to chemotherapy. So these patients then entered onto this study and they're assigned to take this new BDK inhibitor, Zanubrutinib, without randomization. So in total, we treated 109 patients with 17 P deletion CLL as the first line therapy for CLL. And this represents one of the largest experience with this particular type of CLL treated with the same therapy. The main adverse events from these studies are not different from what we already knew about Zanubrutinib. So we've had several years of experience with Zanubrutinib. We know that it has the same side effect profile as the normal BTK inhibitors, namely bleeding, infection, atrial fibrillation, albeit numerically at a lower rate than ibrutinib, than has been reported for ibrutinib. So for this particular study, uh, we didn't experience any new adverse events. There was one death in a patient who had pneumonia, um, and that is not uncommon in patients treated for CLL studies that we do get severe infections. So that's one patient out of 109. Overall, with 10 months of follow-up, serious adverse events have occurred in less than 25% of patients so far. So the patients who took Zanubrutinib for 17P deletion CLL, we had a response rate of 92.7% in, in, that, in that population, which is a very high response rate. Um, so far, the response rates have appeared to be durable. Of the 109 patients, we have had four patients who developed progressive disease, but the rest remain well and in ongoing treatment and in ongoing remission. Now, a question is, is this response rate better than that what you would expect for ibrutinib, which is for the first generation BDK inhibitor? And to be honest, ibrutinib works very well. There's a zanabrutinib. So I think it would be hazardous to draw comparisons between the two drugs right now, especially given that there are two phase three studies that are comparing the two drugs head to head. And these studies will be reported in the next few years. So I would rather leave the efficacy analysis for those phase three studies. So the main limitations to the study, firstly, you know, the, the follow-up is fairly short. So the, so far the patients have been followed up for 10 months, they're all doing fine. But really what we're really interested in is whether, how durable the remissions are going to be. Now we know from our brutinib experience that they're going to do really quite well in the short to medium term. But obviously longer follow-up will be required to confirm that these patients are done with brutinib, who are now responding so well at 10 months, will continue to respond well at the two, three, five year mark. The other thing is that there are, these patients are going into remission, but they're not going into very deep remission because BDK inhibitors as a class do not get patients into very deep remission. They control the disease, but they don't get the patients into minimal residual disease, negative remissions. So the next research question is, Given that minanoclax and other drugs, when added to other BTK inhibitors, seem to be improving the response, the next question is, what if you add minanoclax to zanobrutinib? Will you further improve response? And in fact, for the Sequoia study, we have now opened one extra arm. And that extra arm will take exactly this type of patients with 17P deletion, and we are going to test the combination of zanobrutinib and minanoclax to see if we can get even better responses. Mm -hmm.